good afternoon everyone today i'm going to take a class on india's agriculture and agricultural marketing five percent of india's population depends on agricultural sector and it accounts to 22 percent of gdp of our country so agriculture plays a very important role in supply of vital supply of all goods and commodities and agriculture sector is one of the largest sector which produces most of the products and which also provide more than 66% of people employment so during last 5 years if you look into the agriculture sector we have witnessed that most of the agricultural crops commercial crops fruits vegetables food grains poultry dairy all these agro sectors have emerged in a very greater extent and you know that india is the highest producer of milk in the world agriculture marketing plays a very important role in providing a business opportunity to farmers consumers middlemen and society it provides a channel of communication between farmers and this society so today we are going to understand a more precisely about agricultural marketing or none other than agri business what is agricultural business and what is agricultural marketing you know that what is marketing the marketing is about popularizing about a product making it available to the consumers it's a marketing so today we will be studying about what is agricultural marketing how all our agricultural producers are marketed in the economy so when we talk about agricultural marketing it is nothing but about making a, a, a link between producers and consumers here farmers are the producers and the common people are the consumers so it is about making an available a platform to the farmers and to the end user with various agricultural marketing aspects so let us understand before understanding this what is agricultural marketing so let us understand a brief of indian agricultural sector so before post pre independence you all aware that before independence india was under the regime of british rule and you know that india was suffering uh, from agricultural produce and the agricultural sector was crippled and you know that india was made as a mere source of producer of agricultural produce to those industries which were located in england and you all aware that india was just a mere an produce of certain agricultural produce which were been made used made as a available raw material to all those industries which are available in england so we uh, let us uh, uh, look into the agricultural sector after independence so this uh, stage we can broadly classify into four stages let us understand the first stage the first stage Uh, we can roll out to 1947 to 1964 we call this is the first stage of indian agriculture the stages so during this stage we can uh, observe that so in india we had a great famine we call it the, the great bengal famine so it erupted in bengal in the year 1942 and 1943 with this backdrop of this uh, famine so indian agricultural system had a wide effect and uh, indian agriculture suffered a lot so during this period hardly our uh, food production was 0.1% and as we got our independence uh, we can understand that so we didn't had any uh, self sustained agricultural sector and our agricultural sector lack of lot of infrastructural facilities we didn't add a scientific form of agriculture so we had a very tra traditional and customized form of agriculture sector so agriculture sector was just 
an occupation which was been imbibed by a poor people of poor farmers or farmers didn't add their own land to cultivate so there was a zamindari system which used to exist and our farmers were just were used as the workers to work in those farms so there was no there were very few farmers that to they are in a large scale and there were most of 70 to 80% of our farmers were landless farmers so lot of uh, modification implementation law and order and distribution of land all those uh, um, activities took place during this first stage so let us understand during this first stage so so there were lot of steps were taken the steps were taken in order to see that the agricultural sector to be taken as one of a uh, major contributor to our indian economy so as like uh, the heavy industries were established most of the industries were established uh, uh, which are agriculture related industries like fertilizers pesticides and most of the factories were established which uh, were used to use uh, agriculture produced as a raw materials like paper mill industry textile industry food processing industry cotton and textile industry okay sugar cane industry these are the major industries which were established during 1947 to 1964 so apart from this there were as you all understand that as we got our independence so this period we also call it as a period of in nehru period so he gave much importance uh, to heavy large scale industries and large scale industries were given more importance and these uh, during this time so we should also understand that there was the, the less production of food production and the food products were inadequate to meet the consumption needs of the growing population hence we imported 10 million tons of food grains from us in order to feed the population okay now let us understand the second stage of agriculture the second stage we it's turned to be between 1965 to 19 85 so during this period uh, so we call this period as a golden period uh, in terms of agriculture revolutions a lot of agriculture revolutions were brought in during this period and during this period of 1965 1985 most of the eminent uh, prime ministers were took charge of industries took charge of agricultural sector like lal bahadur shastri indira gandhi Moraji Desa and Charan Singh were the, are the eminent leaders who put agriculture in a forefront and it uh, occupies a very important place in contributing to the GDP of our country. And during this period, there was a green revolution which took place and there was a milk revolution uh, which took place. So more number of industries were established, hybrid seeds were established. high variety of high yielding variety of seeds of wheat rice and were uh, been introduced into our agricultural system and uh, utilization of water nutrients fertilizers pesticides were brought in during this period during this 1960s there was intensive agriculture district program was uh, been introduced at the district level and most of the farmers were made the beneficiary of this program during this second uh, stage the national bank for agriculture and rural development was set up and this bank had used a lot of uh, uh, inputs uh, from various international and national uh, organization and this was a uh, an institution uh, which worked phenomenally to have a, a bring a, a revolution in agricultural sector during 1968 there was a green revolution uh, which was in broad was been uh, successful in our country which generated a lot of confidence among the farmers and it has a lot of uh, good public policies and guidance which uh, 
uh, created a, a confidence among the people to have a good production of agricultural produce during this second stage. So let us understand the, the third stage of agriculture production. The third stage starts from 1985 to 2000. This is the era of where we had a eminent leaders, dynamic leaders who brought the dreams of a common farmers to be achieved and a lot of agricultural innovations, development activities took place during this time technology was being brought near to the forefront of uh, farmers where the uh, information about uh, uh, soil, soil test, information about the climate, information about uh, the um, monsoon seasons and information about how to bring the wastelands to an cultivated area and most of the technological approaches were brought into this and there were trade and commerce were also been correlated with agricultural system and there was the end to end approach was introduced during this period. So it is about production and consumption chain end to end to the farmer to the consumer there was a chain link which was been steadily made to have been brought between uh, under agriculture system. So there was uh, a main objective was about increase the productivity of agricultural uh, during this period was given uh, more importance and lot of uh, credit cooperative systems were established during this system. So the another stage is fourth stage. The fourth stage let us understand it was uh, uh, from 2001 to the present stage we called as a fourth stage of agricultural development stage. So we are into this fourth stage. Let us try to study there from the year of 2001. So it was in the during the year 2001 most of the economic policies were brought and we were in the introduction of new economic policy that is the 1991 new economic policies was introduced and our uh, economic systems were liberalized, privatized and globalized and during this period our agriculture sector was been protected and prevented and lot of uh, economic measures were took place in this sector where agriculture sector was been protected and it was not brought under LPG policy. So this was we have to hail the, uh, the long vision of Dr. Manmohan Singh of not bringing the policies a global policies into agricultural sector. So, the agricultural sector was protected and our farmers were protected and since in India we can find that we have a less farmers holding large uh, land, uh, land holdings and most number of farmers holding uh, less land holdings. So, the productivity is once again uh, a point of study where uh, the productivity in the field of agriculture sector cannot be increased to a certain extent or beyond to that. So now let us understand the role of Indian agriculture system. So as you all know that, so let us understand the role of agriculture in the Indian economy as uh, if we summarize we can found that today almost from 19 to 22 percent of our total country's GDP is been contributed by agricultural sector and more than 65 percent of Indian population mainly live in villages and their primary occupation is agriculture and there is an employment generation and uh, agriculture sector has provides a livelihood to about more than 65 percent of our country's labor force. And you should also uh, be aware of that uh, Indian, so our agricultural sector also contributes to our exports. 8.56 percentage of India's exports has been contributed by agricultural sector. So let us understand the share of this gross domestic product for a period from 1952. Uh, 2011, 
as you see this in the year 1950 to 51 56.5 percent that is half of the GDP was contributed by agricultural sector and you all aware that during this period there were less industries were established were an establishment so as the year passed on you can just observe every 10 years I have statistical information based on this information you can just observe the percentage of contribution of agricultural sector to the country's GDP has been gradually reduced from 56.5 to 45.9 and 34, 24.7 in the year 2007 and 8 it's 17.8 and 2008 to 9 15.7 and to the year 2011 to 12 you can just observe it is 13.9 percent so it's uh, our uh, country's agricultural sector contribution gdp is reduced to 13.9 so why is it so so because you can understand so earlier in 1950 to 51 it was a direct contribution of agricultural produce to our gdp now you can also understand the other side that all our agriculture produce uh, has been used by most of the industries as a raw material and their agricultural producers have been converted to a final end finished product by contributing by most of the industries. So the most of the industries are utilizing in agriculture produce as a raw material and they are producing. So the direct contribution of agriculture sector to the GDP is 13.9 percent so we cannot deny that still uh, agriculture plays a very important role in contributing to India's GDP growth indirectly okay till today we can find that agriculture sector plays a very important role and it is one of the largest employment providing sector in our country still today more than 50 percent of India's uh, population depend on agricultural yield activities and uh, they have been employed in agriculture and other allied activities. So when you look into the uh, neighboring countries you can just observe. So Bangladesh has 57% uh, uh, of its population are the depending on agricultural sector and 68 percent in China and 48 percent in Pakistan. So from there and you can if you compare to the developed countries Japan and France they have contributed to 4 percent and in US and UK it is only 2 percent of their population depends actively on agriculture since 1999. So from this it is evident that in India still most of the India's working force and the population is much dependent on agricultural sector. So now let us understand the nature of agriculture, India's agriculture. So if you look into the nature of India's agriculture, so you can just see that our uh, farmers are uh, cultivating their lands and uh, due to the age old tradition and low productivity and uh, they are uh, just near a subsistence level. There is a head to be agricultural sector to be commercialized. Approximately 45 percent of the total consumption of farmers came from their own production from 1951 to 52. So, and you can also know that uh, Indian uh, so the village economy is much dependent on agricultural sector. So, if a country wants to be developed, the country wants to move forward and it has to give a more importance to agricultural sector, it has to increase the productivity, the land holdings, agricultural techniques, irrigation facilities, widespread of rural indebtedness and the role of money lenders in rural economy all plays a very important role in our country. So you can just look into the India's uh, 
agriculture, Indian agriculture. So in Indian agriculture, you can just regard less of fact that there are most of the states which have been highly developed and those states are like Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Haryana and Bihar, Andhra Pradesh and Maharashtra and West Bengal. All these states have played a very important role uh, in agricultural sector and these states are considered to be a developed state. Their, uh, the fact the fact cannot be denied that the agriculture sector has contributed much and they have played a very important role in developing these states. Let us look into the agriculture produce products, the most of the agriculture products what we produce in our country. We have a lot of fruits, we have spices, we have oil seeds, we have uh, milk products, we have poultry farm, we have fisheries, we have marine products. So all these things and we, our horticulture and fruits and horticulture plays a very important role. So India stands. The, if you look into the world's uh, mm, agriculture contribution, India's, uh, India contributes 10 percent of its fruit produced in the world. India produces 10 percent of the fruit produced in the whole world. So we are contributing 10 percent in fruit production. So we, uh, so let us uh, understand from like, so India holds the third rank in rapeseed world production of the following so like tobacco coconut rape seeds hens egg and coffee production india holds sixth rank in coffee production and india is one of the largest biggest number of livestock in the world it counts to 281 million so india stands at the second biggest largest number of cattle in the world and it counts to be 175 million livestock India stands second largest producer of the following in cabbages, cashews, fresh vegetables, cotton, seeds, lead, brinjal, garlic, silk, goat meat, cardamom, nutmeg, groundnut, cauliflower, etc. The population of India is increasing in a, fa a more rather in a faster phase and you can see India holds the second position in producing rice products. Okay. So let us understand the initiative taken by the government for Indian agriculture. So a lot of uh, guidelines were brought under by the government in the expansion of merchandising, warehousing, cold storage facilities at a massive level to reach the need of a farmer at a village level, taluk levels. So we have an Indian Council of Agriculture Research, which is a principal authority in farming and nationally products, which comprise uh, learning and research. So this plays a very important role in earlier days in resulting in green revolution in the 1970s. If we we'll look into the yield per hectare when compared to the other countries so Indian uh, countries, so India stands actual, so in India the yield per acre is comparatively very low when compared to other countries. It is at an average of say the rice, the potential yield uh, is 31.9 percent per acre which if you compare to the world's uh, largest producer say China, so we lag behind say if we consider China's yield as 100 percent, we stands by 31.9 percent. So, which shows that Egypt, the uh, Egypt country holds the largest uh, uh, yield production. Comparatively, China's yield production is 65.8 and India is comparatively 31.9 percent. So, from this we can understand most of the Indian uh, uh, commodities, the yield per acre is very low. So this may be one of the reason why uh, India's uh, agrarian sector has to be look into it and more efficiency has to be brought in under other modern agricultural tools and activities. So let us understand what are the reason for low productivity in 
Indian agricultural system. So, we can understand according to the World Bank, the Indian Bank, the priorities of agriculture and rural development, India's large uh, agrarian subsidies are hampering. So, we can say that the Indian agriculture sector uh, is backward because of illiteracy, general socio-economic backwardness, slow progress in implementing land reforms and inadequate, inefficient finance and marketing services. Let us understand the characteristics of agricultural products. The, you all are aware that agricultural products have its own characteristics. So, these uh, agricultural products are not only can be produced in large quantity, but it have its own demerits like perishability and the production is scattered around, around and as in industries, the production will take place at one place, but in agriculture, the farm producers will be scattered among different areas. So, the perishability is one factor and scattered production and there is a seasonal production which also plays a very important role and due to only in the certain season the commodities are produced. So, the inelastic demand of agriculture produce will also plays a very important role. So, now let us understand the other factors about agricultural marketing. So, why on the uh, context to all this or let us understand importance of agricultural marketing. So, agriculture marketing is a uh, plays a very important role in meeting the farm producers to the end consumers. So, a lot of uh, policies, a lot of uh, developmental activities has to be brought in try in meeting in the farmers to the end consumers. Let us understand. So, in India, how this agriculture market takes place. Let us understand the meaning of what is agricultural marketing. So, agricultural marketing means it is about giving a, an importance of marketing of products, agricultural products to reach to the end consumer. Here consumer may be a, a people who are buy this agriculture produce for the self consumption or the industries or the middlemen or the trade peoples or the tradesmen will can also be act as an end consumer where they may also buy this produce uh, for their further production. So, let us understand if we have an effective marketing system in our country if it exists we can find that our farmer will have a better prices for the farm producers. So, with the main objective of this marketing is it enables the primary producers to get a best possible return and a very assured better price and they can also have incentive over the price and the more produce produced by the farmers they have a more profitable price. Let us understand the Indian agricultural marketing. The present, uh, the old form of prevailing agriculture marketing is the middleman is the more in middle involvement of middleman into our agricultural marketing. So, as our farm producers, farmer producers the agriculture produce, he produces in independence. He has debt in order to produce, in order to cultivate farm produce, he is imbibed to have loan. He takes a loan on fertilizers, loan on seeds and he cultivates the crop and before uh, crop are been gone for uh, say for processing, he will be made a, a burden of repaying the loans because due to a uh, monsoon uh, the crop may not be yield, there may be a vagaries of monsoon where the where it plays a very important role our farmers may not get the good yield of the farm produce and they may not able to repay the loans and the money lenders will 
always try to grab the form produced in place of money and they try to bargain with the farmers and uh, the due to the lack of transportation to lack of uh, warehousing facilities or farmers are forced to sell the produce uh, the farm produce to the middleman uh, to the money lenders at a low price because of lack of marketability of his products so let us understand the markets when very suspect let us understand type of agricultural markets which are prevailing so this can be classified based on location based on location we have village market primary wholesale market secondary wholesale market terminal market seaboard markets and based on the area we can also classify like local village market regional market national market and world market based on the life span we can also classify this market as a short period market long period market based on the volume of transaction or agriculture market can be classified as wholesale market retail market based on nature nature of transaction we can also classify as a cash market or forward market based on commodities we can also classify the markets as general market where a general crops like food crops oil seed fiber crops are been brought under sold specialized market like uh, food grains cotton market mango market uh, silk market and based on degree of competition also we can classify the market like perfect market imperfect market so based on number of commodities also we can classify the market like commodity markets capital markets and service markets so now let us understand so we should uh, in uh, agricultural uh, marketing the agricultural marketing of products so we insist on regulated market our market should be regulated why our market agriculture market to be regulated since there are more number of players like middleman the tradesmen the wholesalers who try to take the benefit of of the farmers their transport they are unable to transport the commodities from the crop produce area to the market area and they are been been overburdened with the in uh, debtness they couldn't afford to move the take their commodities for and the lack of warehousing facilities where they cannot hold their agriculture produce for a uh, certain period of time to see the market price to have a favorable price so looking into all the uh, the middleman the money lenders will always take an advantage over the farmers so in order to work on this th there should be a regulated market which where to be regulated by the committees regulated by the involvement of government into this markets where the farmers will uh, will have a upper hand in the market so when we look into this earlier before british rule uh, there was a, the first act was the bombay cotton market act was enacted in the year 1927 this is the first law in the country that attempted to have a regulated market so during the first five year plan there was a much importance for given to have a regulated market and the government took lot of initiative in bringing legislative measures to design to regulate the agricultural market let us understand the objectives of this agricultural marketing the objective is of regulated markets assuring the main objective of this regulated market is to assure the fair prices tell producers to get the largest share of the final sale price of the produce providing an ethical environment for proper trade practices by preventing malpractices arranging a common workplace for buyers and sellers to meet and carry out market informations the role of regulated market in marketing of agricultural produce plays a very important role so the main important role of regulated market is of price stabilization here the market 
the agricultural market will have a assured price there is a stabilization of price among the agricultural produce and there will be a fair price for the agricultural produce and there will be elected marketing committee members who act upon take care of this marketing activities and there will be a cooperative societies and there will be a farmer and producers are the member as a part of the member of this market committee with the less malpractices and uh, less middlemen's involvement into this commodities can be taken place and uh, all the people who are involved in this market should uh, obtain a license to operate in this market then we arbitration committee which takes care of rendering services to the farmers and there will be no secret deals all sales proceeds will be made on a fair deal and uh, all those middlemen commission agents has to pay the market charges there will be a packaging sizes with a standard size of packaging of agriculture produce standardizing and grade grading will be given in most priority so let us understand the significance of this regulated market to the farmers the the farmers are most benefited in the regulated market there will be mal practices will be eradicated rationalization of market charges at the minimum lowest price and it will be uniform for all farmer and there will be fair dealing of agriculture produce there will be a perfect competition which will be involved through uh, using a closed seal tenders public auction and it will be open and there will be agreement on by sampling references to the standards and the marketing committee will take the final decision of fixing the prices of the commodities and uh, the most uh, important of this regulated marketing is the utmost uh, farmers uh, benefit and it works on guiding principles of taking care of the wellness of the farmers so it will take an importance in settling any dispute between the traders and sellers and over come there are a lot of defects in regulated markets too let us understand the defects in regulated markets the location and publicity the most of the time these regulated markets will be located at the uh, uh, taluk levels and headquarters where it is not very easy for access for the farmers to uh, bring their produce for this regulated markets and still the commission agents also plays a very important role here they continue to be a major player in this regulated market and they try to high charge hefty commissions on the farmers and the vigilance and supervision of these markets is highly difficult because the possibility of secret commitments may happen between the farmers and the middlemen and there may be a political interference in many committees aware the farmers may have to suffer lack of incentives defective transaction may also prevail in this type of this market and let us understand the measures can be brought under to remove the defects of regulated market publicity the, there is a lack of publicity of this regulated markets among the farmers and there should be an abolition of commission agents in this regulated market there should be regular payments made to the farmers by the tradesmen most of the time tradesmen fail to pay the amount to the farmer there should be a proper uh, supervision and uh, vigilance in this markets so regulation provisions and incentives regulation in transactions is to be brought in and unregulated markets uh, where nearby has to be avoided and marketing cooperatives has to be established in order to bring uh, farmers and safer side so this session we have discussed about uh, about indian agricultural agricultural system and we discussed about agricultural marketing in india and uh, we discussed about regulated markets uh, its importance and its merits advantages how to overcome the de demerits of agriculture marketing so fine students i hope that uh, you have understood about 
agriculture marketing in a better manner. So in the next video, let us understand the other aspects of agriculture marketing. Thank you.